We have almost 500 employees, not a huge company, but uh, 500 employees, seven frack fleets in West Texas, a pretty, pretty good operation. Uh, when we came together as a group trying to figure out, you know, what, how are we going to differentiate ourselves from, from the competition? One was we wanted to have the best equipment. We do believe that hardware does make a big difference for what we do. I mean, the frack pump behind us is, is, you know, way more advanced than any frack pump that's ever been put out. The engine is definitely going to be the most expensive part of any frack build, right? We think we get the best value out of out of a tier four Caterpillar DGB engine. It seems like a lot of companies out here in the Permian Basin run the, the CAT engines, uh, and specifically the, the CAT transmissions are really tough. And they can withstand uh, a lot of the jobs out there. Since they've introduced the tier four engines and the, uh, the DGB units, uh, a lot of customers are going to that. They're installing uh, the DGB kits on their existing units and then buying the new engines with the kits on them as well. The cat pumps sure give us a lot of help as we deal with different operators because they're under the gun with the, the ESG initiatives that have to be done. And because of Caterpillar, you know, gives us, I, we think, a leg up on the market. We have several operators that we work for that say, hey, we don't want anything but tier four engines on our locations just because of the emissions. Tier 4 is basically just going to do a check mark on that ESG box for them, just saying, hey, we're helping the environment by reducing emissions on our side. And if you go to Tier, tier 4 DGB, what you're doing now is you're taking, you're taking natural gas uh, that would come from the earth, being produced by the operator, and you would run that gas in your pump itself. So instead of flaring it out, you'd run it through the pump itself and have it powered out. And then that would, that would negate the need for so much diesel reducing the amount of trucks that have to come in and deliver diesel and the overall diesel use is on bad. So every unit we have, every unit we put in the field, every unit we spec out to build, we'll have a CAT engine and a CAT transmission on it. <laughs> this Caterpillar engine has become a game changer, of course, with ESG and all these environmental and emissions regulations. Um, it cuts down on methane and CO2, um, you know, it doesn't use DEF. Caterpillar is the only one today that offers um, a dual fuel, which is what we call DGB, dynamic gas blending offering. Um, you know, everybody's leaning towards emission controls. There's a push for, for more equipment uh, with this DGB on their engine. So, I mean, it's, it's gonna be, again, it's gonna be the future. ENPs are looking for greener solutions, uh, you know, to, to market and you know, do better for the environment. The product you see back here, the 3512 DGB and the TH55 are able to you know, offer greener solutions, increase our performance, do things that help our operators lower their overall cost. Caterpillar is, is huge in, in the implementation of this dual gas. They're able to monitor it from a remote, uh, you know, computers back in the office, help us, you know, catch things before they actually fail. So to my knowledge, the PIM system is unique 100% to Caterpillar. And that system's tied into the engine, the transmission, the power in, and the fluid in. And it all goes into one, one system inside the van where the guy operating pumps can see that. He can see that that system is there, and it shows any failure starting to happen, whether it be hole one, hole three, hole five. And then after that stage, we can go into those specific holes and, and, and diagnose those issues. It'll tell him, hole one, there's some type of issue there. It's a low level issue, so you may have to look into that after the stage. The stage is complete, guys go to this pump, they rig it out, they, they lock it out, tag it out, then they jump on it and they open up hole one and they see that it's a valve issue. So instead of wasting time on all five holes, they fix the valve issue on hole one, they button it back up and then we're ready to go again. So life before that was, was Am I, as I'm pumping along, no issue is present. I don't know of an issue that's present. I just keep pumping. At the end of that stage, a, a line boss comes by and he says, hey, the pump is moving around too much. It's shaking too much. Looks like something's wrong. Well, we just pumped on it for two hours with something wrong. So once we open up that fluid and we find that there's a crack or a wash, that component's lost. That's forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 lost in that component that could have been prevented if this system was in place. When we came together as a group trying to figure out, you know, what, how are we going to differentiate ourselves from, from the competition? One was we wanted to have the best equipment. I think that's why we've been so successful.